Earlier in the semester, we spent a good bit of time discussing carbonyl compounds, which are electrophiles. More recently, we talked about alkenes, which are nucleophiles. But what happens when these two types of functional groups are linked by conjugation? This sort of conjugated system is called an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl because there is an alkene between the carbons alpha and beta to the carbonyl group. So, are these compounds nucleophiles, as we might expect from the alkene portion? Yep. The alkene can react with the sorts of electrophiles that alkenes usually react with, like Br2. And are they electrophiles? Yep. The carbonyl group reacts with certain nucleophiles, just like you'd expect. Lithium aluminum hydride, for instance, reduces the carbonyl group, just like we might have predicted. But if I treat an alpha-beta unsaturated ketone with a nucleophilic Grignard reagent, followed by an acid workup, I get two regioisomeric products. The first one I probably could have predicted, but the second one involved the Grignard attacking here, at the beta carbon. Why do we see two products? Because conjugated systems have delocalized frontier molecular orbitals and therefore can often react at multiple locations. Let's draw out the pi molecular orbital diagram of acrylene, the simplest alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound. It has four atoms in the conjugated system, so four pi molecular orbitals with 0, 1, 2, and 3 nodes. The particular shapes and sizes of these orbitals are distorted from what we might predict by the fact that there's an electronegative atom. Suffice it to say that they look like this. The HOMO is largest on O and the alpha carbon, and the LUMO is largest at the beta carbon, with a substantial lobe at the carbonyl carbon. So, the outcome we might have predicted arose from the Grignard reagent reacting at this part of the LUMO. We call this direct addition to the alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl. But the unexpected product was formed by reaction at this lobe of the LUMO. So how does the mechanism work? If a nucleophile attacks here, it pushes electrons up onto the adjacent carbon but carbon doesn't particularly like to have negative charge. And because the lone pair is adjacent to this carbonyl, we can draw a better resonance structure of this intermediate. In mechanisms, it's always most efficient to go directly to the best resonance structure. So we would normally draw this step like this. We call this conjugate addition to the alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl. The intermediate we form here is called an enolate, and it is an extraordinarily important intermediate in chemistry. Enolates typically react with acids, like this, protonating at carbon to produce a carbonyl compound. In the next video, we'll explore these two reaction pathways in more detail.